Hey guys, even here, so we have a couple of very interesting topics for this video, but we are starting as you can see with a physique update of Steve Kuklo, and more than that, Steve Kuklo basically calling out Kamal Algarni in this caption here. As you can see, first he writes that he is 5 days out of Texas, and as you can see he is shredded, he is lean. Like, he is grainy, he is hard, he is in condition, that's for sure. And then he adds 212 to 50, 300, it don't matter, we'll see you Saturday. And then he adds an emoji of a, of a gorilla. So basically what this means is he didn't want to say specifically Kamal Elgarni. I don't care that Kamal is coming, I'm gonna beat him. No, he says 212 and we all know what he means by 212. Of course, he means the former 212 Mr. Olympia champion, the guy that is very much hyped, that everybody wants to see win this show. Kamal Elgarni is coming in Texas, he just lost in Tampa and he's probably gonna improve and come even sharper at Texas and he wants to win he wants to beat steve kuklo is he gonna do it well we'll see but i say right now no way i say no chance three years ago steve kuklo and akim williams were battling for the first spot at indie pro and steve kuklo prevailed as you can see he was definitely not dwarfed by akim williams not even close as a matter of fact i would say steve kuklo pretty much dwarfed akim if that makes sense but yeah he's definitely a bigger bodybuilder even though here akim has the angle he's closer to the camera steve still does look bigger and steve is actually known for being one of the biggest guys in bodybuilding today. Steve Kukla is deceivingly big. When you look at his Instagram photos, you think he won't be that massive, but that's because of his height and his proportions. In reality, he is a really big bodybuilder. Of course, there are limits to that. He is not as big as Big Grammy, but he has been known for dwarfing some really big bodybuilders. Now, if he did this to Akim and beat him only three years ago, what will he do to Kamal? And also, as you can see, his back double bicep is actually pretty good, it's much better than Akeem's. Also, this show was only 3 years ago, after that, Akeem kind of figured out conditioning, so this year, in 2019, Akeem actually got to the Mr. Olympia stage, I think based on points, and he actually placed in the top 10, as a matter of fact, he was 9th, while Steve Kuklo was 6th. Yeah, that was 2019 Mr. Olympia, which wasn't exactly the toughest lineup ever, but just like Akeem, Steve Kuklo was top 6 Olympian at one point. And last year, he barely missed the qualification, he tried to do it in the last minute, he was so confident that he was gonna do it, he failed, but he deserved to be on that stage. He is an Olympian, he should be there, and I think he's going to get there by winning this year's Texas Pro. I honestly don't think Kamal has a chance against Steve Kuklo, as long as Steve comes in decent conditioning, his size will be enough. Just like Akeem pretty much did, he wasn't super peeled, but he was conditioned enough. Even though Kamal smoked Akeem in the back double bicep, it still wasn't enough. And Steve Kukul is actually much more complete bodybuilder than Akeem. He is not maybe as freaky, he doesn't have so many freaky body parts, so many freaky poses, but he doesn't have that many weak poses. So he's very complete all around, he knows how to come conditioned, and he is massive, and he's probably more massive than Akeem. And also, based on this physique updated 5 days out of Texas, we can be pretty sure that Steve Kuklo is bringing conditioning, with a lot of size too. If you guys want to support my channel, you can do that by trying one of the old school lab supplements, for example Vintage Blast, there is a link down below, and if you use a code EVEN you get a 12% discount. Vintage Blast is honestly an amazing pre-workout, it has so many different flavors, so many great flavors, and it gives you great pumps, great endurance, also it doesn't have a lot of caffeine, but it's gonna get you amped up for sure, so if you guys want to support my channel once again, you can try this or any other products, the link's down below. Now let's check out his competition, I think there are two guys that are actually gonna be challenging him, Kamal here, and another guy, I'm gonna show him to you after Kamal, now as you can see right here, this is the most recent physique update of Kamal, also around 5 days out of Texas, and it could be just the lighting or whatever, but it looks to me that he's already kind of maybe a little bit sharper. He also spoke about this, he said that he didn't want to have a cheat meal after Tampa because he wasn't happy with the result and he wants to improve for Texas. And I think he's going to try and come in even more shredded, and I think he can be more shredded. Now, Kamal has crazy details. As you can see, his back, his lower back, his traps are separated like crazy, there are so many details, you can see every five 
fiber in his back and you can see some striations in the glutes but there is some fat in those glutes that's for sure especially in the upper glutes and the judges see that if you guys pay close attention you will see there is fat that's fat that's not water or anything that's fat in the upper glutes also a little bit in the lower glutes and hamstrings just a tiny layer he can get rid of this in a week probably if you take a look at what his glutes looked like in 2020 and by the way he won the mr olympia in 2012 of course a year before this in 2019 and 2020 came sean clarida beat him and won this mr olympia now here as you can see kamal's glutes were harder they were harder, they were bigger, they were definitely more conditioned. I feel like Sean Clarita beat Kamal that year because of the roundness, the crazy roundness that Sean has. You can see the quads are much rounder, the glutes as well are bigger and rounder, especially the lats. The lats are popping like crazy, it's a crazy wee taper. Shoulders, arms, you name it. I mean, Sean is super, super round, super 3D. And the reason why Kamal lost to Sean here was that roundness. And I think Sean has that roundness not only because of his genetics, but also because of his age don't forget guys kamal is 51 and i think he's turning 52 this year if you take a look at his glutes if you take a closer look at his glutes and hamstrings and also his legs you can see that age is slowly very slowly but age is taking a toll on his body I mean, he looks absolutely crazy, outstanding for a 51-year-old, that's for sure, but you cannot ignore that something is starting to happen, slowly but surely. Literally the same thing happened with Guy Cisternino. I was a huge fan of Guy, but when I saw these photos, I thought it was time for him to finally retire. I think I made a video about it, he did a show as well, and you could see that he atrophied in certain body parts, especially his legs, his hamstrings and glutes, and I think the same thing, exact same thing, is happening to Kamal. And without that roundness, without that fullness, details are gonna get him only so far. And I think at Texas Pro, they will get him in top 3, which is amazing. But I don't really see him winning this show. And I probably don't even see him being second. Because in second, I kind of have to say, I do have hand reject. First, I have to correct myself, so yesterday I posted a video about Andrew, he posted a posing video on his YouTube channel, and I said that it was from one week out, and that his conditioning is not good for one week out, and so many other YouTubers also did this, like Nick Strength and Power, and none of us checked the thumbnail, thumbnail said 18 days out, so that video was from 18 days out of Texas and this one the new one that he posted this posing practice with uh, Flex Wheeler and Milo Sharchev is actually from two weeks out of Texas bro so this is the most recent physique update of Andrew Jacked now let's take a look at this one and look guys I don't really see that he improved his conditioning that much in that one week I don't think so I think his conditioning is let's say okay for two weeks out but he's not ready yet now, does this mean that he's not going to be conditioned in Texas? Not necessarily. Let me share my experience with this. So last year I competed and two weeks out, my glutes were not in, my glutes were not shredded. But the game plan was to start really hard at two weeks out and then one week out, take it slowly. So in that one week, my glutes came in. So maybe that's also the game plan of Andrew Jack or should I say George Farah, who is coaching Andrew Jack. So maybe now they're going to start pushing it really hard for that one week and then just cruise into the show in the last week. Or maybe... Andrew's body is stubborn and won't lose body fat or maybe he's cheating on his diet we won't know that but there is a possibility that he is going to be peeled at Texas and that his glutes are going to be shredded that his glutes are going to be separated if that happens I don't think I need to see him completely peeled if he improves his conditioning let's say for 10% more I think that's probably going to be enough for him to be in the top two now, this is his first pro show, he doesn't have a lot of experience with posing, with confidence on stage, he doesn't know what to expect, what kind of mind games are these other competitors like Steve Kukul gonna play, these guys have so much experience, there are so many things involved in this, but as far as the physique, I think this guy has the physique to be the winner. 
I do see that. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, you know, it's kind of crazy to say that somebody is gonna win a pro show, somebody that never competed in a pro show. So you kind of shouldn't say that, but from what I'm seeing here, man, I can't, I can't ignore this. I cannot say that he's gonna be fifth or sixth. No, I don't see this. I am saying top three at least. And I think he looks better than Quinton Area, who is also a good bodybuilder, established bodybuilder, top three at Tampa. I don't see Quinton beating Andrew with this freaking back. Look at his back. Crazy details. And look at the arms and the shoulders and the we the, the axe taper. Wow. Wow. He has a lot of potential, this guy. And check it out when he does the transition to back lat spread. Look at this. <laughs> look at the Christmas tree. It reminds me so much of Flex Wheeler, he is not on that level yet, but there is the talent, there is the potential, he can get to that level. So it really seems like Anderjack is actually not overhyped. You can say that he is overhyped in a sense that, you know, he never competed against pros, so how sure can you be what he's gonna look like on that stage? We can be 100% sure, but, you know, from what I'm seeing, from what we're all seeing, wow. Wow, this looks amazing, honestly. Milos gave him some awesome tips for posing. It's awesome that Andrew has so many great mentors, so many great bodybuilders helping him out. Even though he has no experience, he's going to learn a lot by listening to these bodybuilding legends here, like Milos Archer, like Flex Wheeler. Just look at what Milos Archer did to his high tricep pose. Now, this is first of all a phenomenal side tricep. Look at the arms and delts. Milos told him to turn his body to the front while keeping his legs to the side, showing more of the width, showing more of the chest which is something I spoke about in my previous video for him to open up in the side pose because he has amazing width through the shoulders and he needs to showcase that on the stage he needs to use whatever tools he has because it's going to be really tough you know, beating Steve Kuklo and yes, I do think Andrew is going to be battling for that first spot I have him in top 2 do I see him beating Steve Kuklo? Well, if he comes in peeled, if he improves his conditioning significantly and comes in a similar conditioning like Steve Kuklo, I do have him winning. I honestly have to say, I think he looks better than Steve Kuklo and they are about the same height. I know Andrew is like 260, 265 right now and Steve is a little bit heavier, like 270, 280, but you know, the shape of Andrew is just so amazing, you cannot ignore this. So I have him possibly even winning. Texas, but just to be safe, I'll say he's going to be second, which is also crazy for his pro debut to be second at freaking Texas Pro and beat a former tooth fell Mr. Olympia champion Kamala Gargni, but that's just the way I see it, guys. I'm telling you what I'm seeing, what I honestly think, and if you agree with me, tell me in the comment section down below. If you disagree, also tell me that. All comments are appreciated. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comment section down below. For more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.